This is Bill O'Shaughnessy, and this is a very special moment. All of New Rochelle is talking about the word, and this, I guess, is really as close as we can come to the official announcement that Noam Bramson, the mayor of our city, uh, is going to aspire to higher office. Noam Bramson, welcome. Thank you, Bill. It's good to be with you. And uh, given the many hours that I've spent at VOX, which has always been a great privilege, I really am glad to have the opportunity to talk with you about this challenge directly. Noam Bramson, Mr. Mayor, people uh, say uh, that they thought you were always going to take Nita Lowy's seat. You, but now you want to run for county executive. Well, that's a, a flattering thought. I must tell you, though, I think that in executive office, you have an extraordinary opportunity to make a difference in people's lives. Uh, there's an immediacy to executive office that's not always present in a legislature. You're talking about county executive. Exactly. What's uh, the difference? The difference between that and what? And being a congressman. Well, um, as I said, the nature of executive office is quite different. The ability to uh, undertake actions, to set an agenda, uh, to really uh, drive a government uh, directly, um, I think is much greater when you're in an executive position than when you're in a legislative position. And as I look at county government, as I look at regional government, uh, I see extraordinary opportunities for policy innovation, uh, to apply energy to challenges related to land use, economic development, environmental protection, public health, uh, the reform of social services, uh, the reduction of government waste and inefficiency, which we know is rampant throughout Westchester because of extraordinary duplication. So all of those are challenges that can either only be confronted at a regional level or can best be confronted at a regional level. And so if you believe in public service, as I do, and if you think that um, in a community we have responsibilities to one another and that we ought to judge progress by how all of us are moving forward, uh, the ability to serve in an office which can be so positively impactful is something that uh, I look ahead to with great excitement. And I hope very much that the values uh, I have demonstrated throughout my public life can be expressed again in a positive way in county government. Mr. Mayor Noam Branson, how old are you now? I'm 43, as of yesterday. And well, happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, you uh, came into public view when you knocked off a, uh, a daughter of a governor, Malcolm Wilson of sainted memory, who succeeded Nelson Rockefeller. Few may remember, but he was an icon. And, and you knocked off his daughter, Catherine Wilson Conroy, and you went door to door about a hundred times. You were everywhere apparent and surprised the hell out of everybody. Do, do, do people sometimes underestimate you? Um, I think that may be true, and uh, it's probably good to be underestimated. Mm -hmm. And I remember that race uh, very well. And by the way, I have great respect for, for Kathy Conroy. She's someone who served the city of New Rochelle with, uh, with distinction. When was that uh, race? How long have you been mayor now? Uh, that was in 1995. Uh, I joined the city council in January of 96, and I became the mayor 10 years later in January of 2006. So I'm completing my, my seventh year now uh, as the mayor of New Rochelle. Uh, I guess the lesson for that race is that when I believe strongly in something, um, I'm not afraid to take on a tough challenge. And I know that this will be a tough challenge. I don't for a second uh, underestimate uh, the political skills uh, of Rob Astorino, uh, nor do I underestimate uh, the ability of uh, others who may compete for the Democratic nomination. And I know that if, uh, I, if I'm going to succeed in this effort, then I, and along with all those who will work with me, uh, we will need to demonstrate great energy, great focus, great determination. Uh, but we will be motivated by a desire to serve and to do good. You're one of New Rochelle's children. You're a child of our city. And um, uh, you went to Harvard. Everybody knows you're bright, but... but Others say you're hard to get close to. Who's the real Noam Bramson behind all that brilliance? Uh, uh, thank who you, are, I think. Uh, who are you? Um, what an interesting question. Uh, you, you may do better interviewing my, my wife or children uh, in order to get uh, a good response to that. Uh, I would say, um, actually, Katie describes me as emotionally simple. Your wife. My wife. Uh, and by that, I think she means that um, 
the kinds of things that that make me happy, the kinds of things that motivate me, are, are not particularly complex. You know, the the greatest joy in my life is the opportunity to be with my boys, uh, and How old uh, and are they with my now? family. Uh, the youngest just turned seven, and the older is about to turn nine. Uh, and what motivates me in government and in public life is the opportunity to shape lives for the better. It is a tremendously rewarding undertaking. So um, what you see is what you get with me. Uh, there's no, um, uh, there's no uh, hidden complexity. Um, but, of course, the challenges that we undertake in government, the issues that we have to confront, and for that matter, the challenges that many people face in their own lives, those are complex. And uh, they require us to uh, grapple them with a sense of seriousness. And one of the things that I intend to do in the months ahead is offer a campaign of substance and ideas that is really focused on the big challenges that will shape Westchester over the next 25 years, because we want this to be a strong community, a healthy community, an inclusive community, a place where everybody counts. You're talking about Westchester itself. Correct. Mm -hmm. Why are you leaving New Rochelle? Why are you bailing out on us? I'm not leaving New Rochelle. New Rochelle is my home. It's been my home since uh, the day I was born, and uh, we're not going anywhere. Um, you know, our kids are in the public schools. And uh, this is our community. And if I am fortunate enough to be elected county executive, uh, I will continue serving this community along with, with many others. And, and one thing I've learned, by the way, as mayor, is that we're all interlinked. What happens in New Rochelle and Mount Vernon and Yonkers matters to Bedford and Mount Kisco and Chappaqua and vice versa. We have a common environment, common economy, common transportation infrastructure, set of public institutions that are interlinked. Um, and we need focused regional leadership if we're going to grow the economy and create jobs, if we're going to improve our quality of life, if we're going to make government more efficient, if we're going to honor our commitment to working parents, to seniors, to children, to the vulnerable. So we're all connected, and uh, that's that notion that we are in this together, uh, I think will be one of the defining tests and questions that will be opposed during the course of this campaign. No, Brass, it sounds like you're been talking to the Cuomos. Did you rub up against the governor or his father? Um, they talk like that. We're all connected. Well, I'm a great admirer of the governor, and I think he has demonstrated exceptional leadership in Albany. And uh, one of the things that uh, I would hope to do if I am elected county executive is uh, work even more closely with the governor and his team in order to make uh, New York a more competitive and vibrant state, and in order to make Westchester more competitive and vibrant. Mr. Mayor Noam Bramson, you're a Democrat. Rob Astorino, you mentioned him. You you want his job. Uh, I think he's a pretty nice guy. He's a Republican, though. I do, too, by the way. Um, on a personal basis, I happen to like Rob Astorino quite a bit. We, we get along. We're about the same age. Our, our kids are roughly the same age. So uh, I find it very easy to relate to him. Did but you call him and say, I, I want your job? Uh, we actually spoke in person at an event uh, a couple of days ago. For, you told uh, him you were going to run? Yeah. We what spoke, did he say? Well, he was very uh, gracious about it and polite, as, uh, as I would expect. This is not a personality contest, and it's not going to be an exercise in name-calling. And I, I don't think it should be necessary to dislike a political opponent in order to have an honest debate about goals and values and philosophy. And so the issue is not um, that Rob and I may not get along. We do get along. The issue is that we approach the challenges of regional leadership from very different perspectives. How so? Well, I'll give you a, a few examples, some of which uh, I've already touched upon. Uh, I think that public action has value. And as I said earlier, I think that there are many things that can only be accomplished at a regional level. And that is why we need to be innovative and energetic in all the different policy categories I, I spoke about. How we plan our cities, how we preserve open space, uh, how we uh, devise social services that can move people to independence and self-sufficiency, how we invest in our infrastructure, how we end uh, the duplicative services that drive up costs. You don't my, think my, he believes in this? Stuff? I don't think that this administration has a policy apparatus for confronting any of those challenges in a serious way. I think to a great degree, uh, they think this is simply not their problem. And what you have seen instead is, I think, an ideologically motivated agenda, which, for example, chooses to scale back county government even when doing so will impede the goal of cost savings because there are some things that can be done more effectively and more efficiently on a regional basis. You see, for example... 
the county not participating in things like the Sustainable Communities Consortium. This is something I just came from earlier this morning. Nassau's there, Suffolk's there, New York City's there, mayors from various cities in the region talking about an integrated development. Was Westchester there? Westchester not represented. This is why the county has withdrawn from the preeminent organization that deals with issues of climate change and climate adaptation. Uh, So there's no energy being applied to any of these goals. And my view is we ought to be looking at practical outcomes. We ought to look at how our actions affect real lives, how our actions affect real communities, and not be employing um, an ideological test, which may not reflect the values and interests of the people of Westchester. A couple of other differences. The underlying uh, values that we apply to a public life. Uh, I happen to believe strongly in a woman's right to choose. I think women ought to be able to make health care decisions for themselves. Uh, Rob Are Astrid, you for abortion? No, I don't think anyone would describe themselves in those terms. Uh, uh, but I believe that women ought to be able to make their own decisions, consistent with their conscience in consultation with their families and doctor, consistent with their own religious beliefs. I don't think that choice ought to be dictated by a government bureaucrat or an elected official. But uh, do you think abortion is good or bad? I, like I said, I don't think anyone thinks abortion is good. I think okay. uh, the uh, if you speak to women who have been in a position uh, where they've had to terminate a pregnancy, uh, I think you would find very few who do not face such a choice with a sense of, uh, of great uh, emotional um, uh, conflict. So you uh, would differ on that. That's, is we that would an differ issue for we, county executive? It does tell us a little bit about the underlying philosophy that we, applaud, that we employ when we approach the challenges of government and public life. Similarly, uh, I believe that adults in loving, committed relationships ought to have an opportunity to marry. Uh, Rob Astorino opposes uh, Governor Cuomo's marriage equality law. So there are differences uh, on that level. It tells us something about our political character. And and the last thing I'd say is, and I mentioned this before, I think we are all in this together. And we as a community do best. We all move forward best when everybody has an opportunity to succeed. Uh, the agenda advanced by the Astorino administration has had a harsh, disproportionate impact on working families, on the middle class, even something like uh, reducing the amount of support available for child care. Self-defeating, because it makes it harder for people to work, more likely that they will end up being dependent on other forms of public assistance. So in addition to being, in my mind, unfair and unreflective of a community where we have a stake in each other's lives, it's also short-sighted from a very practical perspective. We're speaking with Noam Bramson, the mayor of New Rochelle. This is his first interview since over the weekend declaring that he wants uh, to uh, be county executive of all of Westchester. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, we know that you're a modern politician. You, you're big on the Internet. You send out notices and you're, you're a, a technocrat and, and, and a brilliant young man in every telling and by every account. Um, but, but are you, again, I want to just take a go at this, if you'll allow me. The the we've seen politicians like Tony Calavita, little Italian lawyer from East. He's got a real thing for people. There's a real chemistry there. George Latimer uh, stood up against three million dollars, and he, he's a towny local yokel politician. Uh, the, 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 that kind of of politician uh, kind of uh, is a dying breed and is kind of being pushed aside by brilliant, but you studied public policy at Harvard. I don't think any of these guys studied public policy. You know what I mean? The new politician against the old. Well, You're the new. Uh, uh, that's an interesting observation. Um, I have to say that the the folks you all mentioned are plenty smart and plenty successful and and aren't going anywhere. And I, I don't know that they describe themselves as a, uh, an old breed. I don't uh, think that at all. Uh, look, everybody in government, everybody in public life has a different personal style. And I think what you should want uh, out of a leader, what I would like out of a leader, is that they be authentic and true to their own character, true to their own sense of self, and not pretend to be something else. Um, I love working with people. I love helping people. 
I'm grateful for all the friendships that I have. And, you know, like anyone else, uh, derive a great deal of strength from that. And we already spoke about my family relationships. But yes, uh, if your question is, do I measure the challenge of government, the challenge of public life, primarily by relationships or primarily by actions? I measure it by actions. I think it's what you do that really counts because it's what you do that changes lives, improves lives, improves communities. And that, in the end, is the test of whether government is serving us or not. But do you have the patience? There's a wonderful character around New Rochelle, Dominic Procopio. He's, they even kid him about being the honorary mayor of the city. And he does favors and he schmoozes and he talks and he has an empathy. And he, he never flunked the interrogatory. When somebody says, how are you? He says, how are you? It, do you get what I'm trying to say? I do. I do. And um, uh, Not a knock on you. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I, you're, you're asking, I think, about political styles and about character. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's as usual, Bill, uh, you're offering probing questions. Um, so I, all I can say is I'm going to be who I am. And um, I think my, my friends and, and my wife and my kids and hopefully the 79% of New Rochelle that, that voted for me in the last election— uh, will think that I'm uh, not only a, a, a capable individual, but also a friendly and open-minded and patient individual who takes a real interest in people's lives and wants to help. We've roamed far and wide in this year's first interview since uh, uh, announcing your interest in uh, being county executive. We've had other mayors of this city, uh, one of your predecessors, Tim Idoni, he still may have ideas about this. Have you talked to him about it? He's now the county clerk. Uh, correct. Um, and Tim and I served together for uh, 10 years uh, when I was a council member and he was mayor. Uh, we are good friends. Uh, I'm a tremendous admirer of what he did in New Rochelle and what he has done as county clerk. He's really modernized that office and made it a model of administrative efficiency. Uh, and that's very much to his credit. Uh, and uh, Tim, um, if Tim were running for county clerk, uh, county executive, I would not be in this race. Uh, so um, there's no sense mm -hmm. of competition between Tim and I. We are uh, supportive of each other, and uh, we share many of the same objectives. In order to take on uh, Rob Astorino, the Republican current county executive, you got to win the Democratic nomination. You got to be the Democrat against Astorino. Uh, there's another one being mentioned, a woman, a New York State Assemblyman, Amy Paulin. They say she could be very strong. Can you beat her? Well, let me say this. Uh, Amy uh, is a formidable individual and an exceptional legislator. Uh, if she were to run for county executive, no question, she'd be a tremendously strong candidate. But I I'm very pleased to say that uh, Amy is supporting me in this race, uh, and I'm uh, delighted to have her support, uh, as I'm delighted to have the support of many others. Uh, Nita Lowy, our, our mutual friend with whom I've worked for uh, t more than 20 years, uh, I'm delighted to have her endorsement uh, and the support of many other colleagues uh, with whom um, I've had a chance to interact over the years uh, through intermunicipal relationships uh, or through work uh, here in, in New Rochelle. So, uh, but your, your general point that there will be competition for the Democratic nomination uh, is certainly the case. And I regard it as a form of friendly competition. I think each of the candidates will be uh, making the case that we have the skill set and the experience for the challenges of the campaign, and then more importantly, for the challenges of governing. And I think what I bring to the table uh, is experience uh, as the leader of a diverse and complex community with nearly 80,000 people. Um, I know what it means to be accountable for the performance of a large public organization. I have brought people together across lines to achieve positive change, uh, compiled a record of achievement on issues directly relevant to uh, the county's challenges, whether it is economic development, uh, whether it is responsible budgeting that has given New Rochelle the lowest municipal tax rate among the major cities of Westchester and our leanest and most efficient workforce in our modern history, whether it's our new sustainability plan that's won awards, really a visionary document for economic and environmental and social progress, or whether it is some of the really thorny challenges that have resisted solution for many years 
And I have worked on an inclusive basis to bring people around a table and think through how we can overcome those challenges together. So uh, college community relationships with respect to Iona, uh, the future of David's Island, a citizen's budget panel to look at the really thorny uh, fiscal challenges that are confronting New Rochelle and so many other communities. That is a, a style of leadership, an inclusive style of leadership that is open to ideas uh, and that seeks consensus that I think is tremendously important uh, in county government in terms of setting plans that will uh, provide us with a better future. This is like questions I've been saving up for a long time for you. Uh, you, you if you leave New Rochelle and move up to county government, uh, I got to tell you, have you driven through downtown lately? Sure. And uh, my view about downtown is we've come a long way and we have a long way to go. Yeah. Uh, there are, uh, and I've, you've probably said this on the radio uh, before, uh, there are days and blocks uh, where I will look around and say, wow, we really accomplished something. There's greater vitality here. It looks better. There's a business that's thriving. There's a restaurant that people are visiting at night. There's a, a park. There's a tower. And there are other days and other blocks when clearly there is still a great deal of economic distress. And the commercial potential, uh, the cultural vitality is not being uh, reached. Um, so um, that is true, by the way, not just of New Rochelle. It is true of first ring suburbs all around the country. And one of the things that I would hope to accomplish through regional leadership at the county level is thinking through how we can use all of the different tools available to us uh, with respect to land use and zoning, with respect to uh, financial instruments, uh, with respect to the relationship between open space on the one hand and transit-oriented growth on the other hand. How we can think through these questions so that we chart a course that enables us to revitalize our cities, preserve suburban characteristics, and ensure that there's a harmonious relationship between the two. That's what we can do in Westchester. There's so much potential for Westchester like, to be a, a, you know, a kind of model for the country. You're talking like that Harvard graduate now. How much money, how much bucks have you got to raise to be county executive? Well, um, they say you're a pretty good fundraiser. Uh, I have been in the context of, uh, of local politics, but I'd be the first to admit that what's required at the regional level is an order of magnitude uh, more difficult. Uh, what the experts say is that a competitive campaign will probably cost between one and a half and two million dollars. Can you raise it? We're about to find out. Uh, it's not a prospect that I relish. I don't know any candidate uh, who enjoys asking friends for money. It's yeah. always uh, an awkward um, and, uh, frankly, unpleasant uh, process. But um, I'm not naive. I recognize that this is what one must do in order to be politically competitive. And if you believe strongly enough in the cause for which you're working and you believe that you can make a positive difference, then you undertake this work, even if it's uh, even if it may be a little unpleasant. Mayor Noam Bramson, you've been very patient with my uh, questions and my uh, meanderings. Um, one thing I got to give you is that I've always said men and women of quality will not submit to the rigors of public service. Uh, you have, and you could make a lot more money doing it. They say you're a weak mayor and a weak mayor former government your admirers would say he's anything but a weak mayor um the uh, uh are you gonna miss when they have citizens to be heard people stand there and call you all kinds of names and yell and scream at you citizens to be heard you don't have to do that as county executive uh no well first let me thank you for the kind compliment that you paid me and and say that you know, we all choose our own path in life. And for me, the rewards of service, um, the sense of satisfaction that comes with service, I think exceeds the pleasure I might receive in a job that, that paid more. But, but did your wife it, ever say, no, I'm get out of this? No. Uh, and uh, But I'll say as we approached the prospect of this race, it was how the question of how this might impact our family was the the chief hurdle that we had to overcome. Uh, because we know the campaign will be exceptionally difficult. And, of course, service. We're talking about a county with nearly a million people. Also very difficult. And Katie and I, and we talked to the kids too, we had to satisfy ourselves that the overall experience would be a positive one. That the lesson we'd be teaching our kids is that when you really believe in something, you have to work for it. You have to be willing to make personal sacrifices for it. 
Um, so we enter this um, both committed, both excited about it, uh, as real partners. And with respect to Citizens to be Heard, um, let me say that I think but one of the chief duties of any government miss official— that. Tell me you're not you, going to miss it. You have to be able to listen. You have to be able to listen. Sometimes people say things you don't like, um, but if you're not open to constructive criticism— then you are really preventing yourself from being as good a public servant as you can be. So there may not be citizens to be heard at the county level, but I think any county executive worth their salt will make sure that he or she finds opportunities to interact directly with the public. But did you ever feel like putting down your gavel, taking off your tie, and go down there and mix it up with a big mouth at the podium? Um, I think there are probably days when any mayor would say at the end of a long public hearing that— um, Maybe they're a little tired and, and ready to go home. Um, but I very much respect the process by which citizens can approach their elected officials directly and say what the, what's on their minds. I mean, that is at the core of um, uh, our democracy. And uh, if you're going to be in public life, you better respect that. We have accused you of being an extraordinary and a brilliant young man, and um, you are that. Keep us posted. Thank you very much for the compliment, Bill, and I'm so glad that uh, we had this opportunity to talk, and uh, I thank you for all that you've done to elevate the conversation here in New Rochelle and throughout Westchester County. It's going to be an exciting fall. That it will. Noam Bramson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor.